Hey everyone and welcome back to our Virtual Bites cooking show. Uh, this week we are on to our main course and what we're doing is we're going to be doing a sheet pan dinner. So it's got our carbohydrate, our, we're using potatoes, it's got our protein and our veggies. The other thing that this is really good for is it's kind of, it's cold outside, like really cold and no one really wants to go anywhere and so by making a meal like this you can even use it for your lunch prep. You can put everything together and then portion, portion it off later into containers for the whole week and do all your cooking at once and that way you don't have to be venturing out every day to the grocery store. We can uh, do an entire meal prep uh, right here. Um, so today uh, afterwards Jess and I are going to be taking everything we've made and we're going to use that for our lunch for the next few days. Um, Maybe we'll let some of the other staff have some food too. Um, so we're just gonna jump right in. Everything for this video has been pre-portioned out. So if you're following along from home with our cooking program, it's the same kits you have at home if you need the recipe. Um, it is posted in the comments section below. And as always, show us your pictures from home, you know, cooking in the kitchen or, you know, the finished product shot. Make sure to be sending those in to uh, gtgame at tbaytel.net because that's the only way that we really know that uh, you guys are using the program. Uh, so please make sure you do send us, you know, pictures or even videos of what you've been cooking in the kitchen. So we're gonna jump in over here. So we're gonna come all the way over here today, Jess. Wrapped up here, I've got my chicken breasts. Those are defrosted and I'm not, uh, I've got them with some paper towel, just soaking up any excess water. They were frozen and we don't want our meat to boil. We want it to be pretty dry. Okay, then we've got our green beans. We are using frozen, fresh or frozen, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you cook from frozen, okay? If you defrost these and then put them on the sheet pan, you're gonna have mushy beans. So make sure those are frozen. Coming over here, I've already started a little bit. We've got our potatoes um, and just quartered them ahead of time and we'll go through that a little bit. I've kept the skin on mine. I like the skin. It adds a little bit of an extra flavor, texture, and the skin is actually really healthy for you. There's a lot of benefits in there, a lot of vitamins and nutrients. So we're keeping the skin on. We are then going to be coming over here. We've got our Parmesan cheese. We've got some honey, some butter, oil, and then a couple packets. This is a little spice mix, has garlic, Italian seasoning, and some paprika. And then this package here has fresh garlic, salt, and pepper. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble everything, and then we're gonna make a glaze to go over it with all the great seasonings. Okay, so like I said here, we've got part of our potatoes done already. And as you can see, when I was cutting through, I came upon some icky black stuff inside the potato. That's, that's not good, we don't wanna eat that. So when you are going through and cutting your potatoes and quartering them, keep an eye out for this kind of stuff and just pull it off. Because this is more of a dinner meal with roasted potatoes, um, I don't want them too small because they're gonna, you know, they might shrivel up and I won't have too much potato left. I want enough to eat. Okay, and again, when we're dicing, we always make sure that we have even sizes. So I'm going through and I'm trying to make, yeah, see, look, there's the, some yuck on that potato as well. We just go ahead and cut that out. Okay, and I've washed these, give them a good scrub down, and we want these to roughly all be the same size. And you can see on the edges, same thing, there are some bits here. And all you need to do, you grab a smaller knife, we call this a paring knife, and very carefully get an adult to help you with this is you can just kind of take off the little bits so we don't waste that good potato. Cut this up half here and half here. So roughly all the same size and I'm just going through and very carefully taking off any of the parts of the potato that aren't going to be edible. Just like that and see yeah that one goes down a little bit further just be very careful when you're doing this. But once you clean off the yucky, um, then it's totally fine to use. You don't have to throw away the whole potato. Um, just like that. There we go. And even though you can tell in the skin sometimes you can see from the outside it's not gonna look very nice. And so then we definitely don't want, yeah, see it extends all the way through. So I'll give that a cut and a cut, and it might be a smaller piece of potato, but we definitely know that all in there is not gonna be any good. I'm making Jess move the camera around a lot today. Yeah, a little bit there. And I mean, sheet pan dinners are great for the other reason that clean up afterwards. We are gonna be cooking everything right on one pan. 
And so, you know, we're only gonna have to really wash our one prep pot and the tools here and then the tools that we eat with. And that's it. I don't have 18 pots, you know, one that I cooked the chicken in, one that I did the beans in, one for the potatoes, everything. It's just it's so convenient to cook it all at one place. It all cooks roughly the same time. If you don't like beans, you can always substitute for um, broccoli, cauliflower. Almost the end of this potato was not very good at all. Um, and the same thing with the meat products. Like if you wanted to do pork chops, just beware that meats do cook at different times. So if you are doing things like steak, um, just make sure you research how long to cook a steak for because it does take less time than chicken or pork products do. Okay, I'm just going through making sure all of my potatoes aren't too, too big because we do want them to cook in the right amount of time. I think that looks pretty even through there. Big, big guys. Nice, wholesome meal that we're making today. Okay, so that looks pretty good for the potatoes. Next, we're gonna come through here. Now, this is a quite a large bag of beans. That's, I mean, I love beans, but probably not that many. So when uh, you're doing this at home, you can just cut a top section off, just like that. We're only gonna put a little bit out. I'm not even gonna measure these. I'm, I've sectioned my pan into thirds. So third for the potatoes, third for chicken, and a third for the beans. So that looks, Jess, do you think that's enough for us for a couple days? Looks good. That one's a little bit darker. Okay, so we've got our beans there. And the rest of it, grab a, you can grab a twist tie uh, or an elastic or anything like that. Make sure you reseal it like this back in the freezer. If you don't seal it and it goes in, um, the air will go in and it'll freeze or burn and make your beans not last as long. So just make sure you do seal that up afterwards. Okay, double check. Sometimes the beans, you know, they get looked over, but sometimes you do get the odd one. So you've got some dark there and just pull those out. Okay. So we've got that there and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our chicken right in the middle. So I'm making some space. Don't want anything too, too crowded together. Um, but we also want it in uh, one layer as best as possible. So I don't, I don't want that because then they're not going to cook as evenly. So while you're, before you uh, do this, I did forget to mention to preheat your oven to 450 degrees. So I went ahead and did that. Jess is going to give an action shot over there to our ovens. Uh, if you've been following along with this series, you might notice something a little different over there. Um, super exciting. Uh, last week, we have brand new induction air fryer ovens that we, uh, that we got. So we've all been very excited to learn those. We had to buy new pots to figure out what worked with induction. Um, and so this is actually gonna be our first time cooking in the oven today. So we're experimenting a little bit here as well. With the chicken, we don't want to rinse it. There's always a misconception about washing your chicken or your turkey. You don't want to do that um, because what happens is as the water hits it, you actually have more of a potential issue of splashing up the raw meat. Chicken especially, we want to make sure that we're being so careful with our washing our hands, making sure it doesn't spread anywhere um, because chicken especially, if it's not cooked all the way through, that's when you can get very, very sick with salmonella food poisoning. And if we're washing our chicken, we're splashing up with everything um, and we could possibly, you know, contaminate other things. So I'm going to go dispose of this. I'm going to clean up my workstation properly uh, and then we'll get into cooking the sauce and everything else. So I will be right back. Okay, so I've got my workspace all cleaned up, went through and put soap and water on the table and we cleared off of our cutting board. So we've got our dinner plan right here. Now we're gonna come over and make a bit of a glaze. So I'm just using a very small saucepan, one of our new saucepans here. Um, so we're gonna put that on and we've got some butter. Actually, we're using margarine, doesn't really matter. Um, whatever your household preference is. I'm gonna put that in the pot and gonna get that melted down. And this is gonna make a little bit of a glaze for our chicken, have a lot of that flavor, flavor enhancers in there, okay? So that's gonna melt down a little bit and then we're actually gonna add in next our honey. And the way that you make a glaze is we're going to add everything together and then we're actually gonna bring it up to a boil. So we're gonna see everything start to bubble 
And then we're gonna let it stay at that level for a couple of minutes. And as it boils, it's actually gonna to start to do what's called reducing. And um, it's, the moisture is gonna evaporate out with the steam. And we're gonna be left with a bit of a thicker sauce. Um, and then it's, it's got more intense flavors because as the moisture kind of comes out of it, um, all of the flavors stay in the sauce. So anytime you see reduction, that's what they talk about is they're creating it to have a, a better flavor. And we don't want soup on our chicken. We, we want a nice little glaze for it. So there we go. So we have three tablespoons of butter and we have a half a, half a cup of honey. So I'm gonna mix that up really well. Get that all combined. Leave this off to the side. Now I've got in here this little package. We've got um, about a teaspoon of um, fresh gar sorry, two teaspoons of fresh garlic and salt and pepper. At home, yours doesn't often look like it comes in a baggie, so just make sure you're measuring that out properly. And the salt and pepper is to taste, so we use roughly a quarter of a teaspoon of each. And that's going to also kind of give us more flavor in there. Salt is a really good flavor enhancer. We want to make sure that we're not eating too much salt, but that we do use it because it does enhance food flavors. Okay. So that's all mixed up. We're going to let this come to a boil and I'll keep a bit of an eye on it there. Just like that. So we're going to come back over to our sheet pan here. And I've got tongs now because I don't want to be touching that chicken with my hands. I've cleaned up everything. We have about three tablespoons of oil here. This is just regular vegetable oil if you want to use um, olive oil, whatever your preference is. We're going to go ahead and we're going to drizzle that on everything. Okay, all over our potatoes a little bit. If you want to be really scientific with it, probably about a tablespoon of each. Um, over each third of the pan. I like to put a little bit extra on my potatoes. So drizzle that whole thing over. And then again, because we don't want to use our fingers, I'm going to go ahead and use my tongs. Because everything is being cooked right now, it's okay if I touch the tongs and the beans and things like that, because it is all going into the oven. I, I mean, I'm, I don't want to do it a lot, so I'm going to try to still keep it separate. But everything's going into a very high temperature oven to cook. And that's what's going to cook any bacteria that's out in the chicken. If you're using fresh green beans, to make sure you do wash those ahead of time as well. Because um, bacteria can live all different places. We've talked about that with our lettuces, always making sure we wash our veggies. That way we also get um, any pesticides, anything like that off. So then I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to make sure my potatoes are well coated. This will help to um, for flavor, but it'll also help that they don't stick. You'll notice I put parchment paper down and that they give us a nice kind of, they crisp up nicely. And then again, I'm going to make sure that they've, I've got those um, as flat as they can. I don't want them bunched up. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of make sure I've got two things kind of on the go. So now you can see here we're really boiling. We've got lots of that. The, that's how we know the bubbles are forming. So I'm going to turn that burner right down to a simmer and we're going to let that sit for another minute or so. And as it's bubbling, uh, it will reduce. Be very careful. If you're reducing a liquid, it could be this and any, if you're doing balsamic vinegar, um, don't let it sit for too long because it'll turn into a very thick, gloopy molasses type paste and you could actually destroy your pants. Um, so make sure you do keep an eye on things and don't let them overboil um, because you can actually evaporate all the liquid out and you will damage your pants. I've actually done that with rice before. Um, and then finally our seasoning here. So this seasoning packet has uh, Italian seasoning in it, some paprika for smoky flavor and some more garlic because I mean in my opinion you can never have too much garlic. Let's put a little bit on our potatoes. Oh, I forgot to kind of turn our chicken around a bit. Get some oil on that. So I'll just turn it a bit, get the oil on the bottom of the pan, and then flip it around again. I'm not gonna be putting any of the seasoning really on the beans. We wanna focus the seasoning on, um, on the chicken and the potatoes. Beans have a wonderful, natural, good flavor to them on their own. Um, and then we'll just turn our chicken one more time. We want to make sure we get both sides seasoned up. Chicken can take a lot of seasoning. And 
and I'm not going to worry about, you know, um, patting that in or anything like that. That's good enough, just right there. Stir these potatoes up a bit more, get that seasoning spread out amongst the potatoes, and then we'll do our last little bit here. goodness out of there. One last little spin around. There we go. Looks good. Smelling good. You can smell everything. Okay, I'm going to leave these off to the side because again they've touched the raw chicken. We don't want to really contaminate our workspace again. So now if we come over here, it's still a bit bubbly but if you'll notice it's, it's getting to you know a bit more of a syrupy consistency and it will even thicken up more in the oven. So we're going to come across here and our recipe says, yeah, see, now that I've taken it away from the heat, those bubbles are going away. You can see that thickness. So we're just going to go ahead and drizzle this over top of our chicken. Nice little glaze for the chicken right there. And it's good. You want to, you might think that as we're pouring this, it's going to um, dissipate all of the seasonings that we just put. They're just going to stick to the chicken. So you want to make sure you always season your meat first. And then when you add a sauce on, it'll still stick in there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn those chickens around again because I do want to make sure those are nicely coated with this fantastic honey sauce. Like that. And you'll notice it's going all over the pan and that's okay because we're making one sheet pan dinner and if it spreads a little bit, it's just extra flavor. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pop this in the oven. Um, the bag there. We're going to pop this in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. We're looking for our potatoes to turn a golden brown um, where the beans are going to look a bit of a brighter green color and the chicken and again we've talked about this before with meat. Nature provides us with a way to know when it's cooked. Our chicken will go from pink to being white and if you're somebody who uses a meat thermometer um, we want the internal temperature of our chicken so we want to stab that right in there and we want that to be 165 degrees um, on our thermometers. But if you cut it through and you see it's all white, then you know your chicken's cooked. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna put this in our oven. We've got it at 400. Because I don't know this oven as much as the old ones, I'm definitely gonna put the oven mitts on because um, we might have a different temperature. Our old ovens were older, um, so they might not have been heating up. Oh yeah, this is hot. You don't want to waste too much time getting that in. We're going to the middle rack right here. We're using convection, which means that there's a fan at the back. It's going to circulate the air and cook it at a more even temperature. And we're going to go ahead. Um, I did check this earlier, but uh, I think I remember. Nope, that's not the time. There we go, timer. And we're going to cook this for 20 minutes, and then we can come back and check. Let's see, I think I just leave it like that. There we go. Okay, I think it's gonna work. If not, I'm gonna set a backup timer on my phone just in case as we, you know, always make sure when we're learning new things. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure if that's gonna work or not. I might have to go back and read in the manual. So uh, we're gonna let that chill out in there. Yeah, that didn't work. I'm gonna figure that out, put my phone timer on and we'll see you in roughly 20 to 25 minutes. Hey everyone, so um, we did go back and check our chicken uh, about 20 minutes in and found that it was still a uh, little ways away so we ended up doing for another uh, 10 minutes. So on your recipes we'll change that uh, to make sure you do at least 30 minutes. Um, but check halfway through and also give those potatoes a bit of a stir. Um, that's why these videos are great. We learn as you learn and then uh, we work all the kinks for you. Um, you also might have noticed I have a, a chapeau. Um, while we were baking, <laughs> really exciting, I didn't realize uh, Albert had gotten us some chef hats to have here and they arrived, so I thought I'd give it a try and look a little more professional in here. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and pull this out. Don't uh, put your face in right away because it is quite hot. We've got our oven mitts on. So you can see our chicken has turned a uh, nice white color. We've got the brown of the potatoes. So here I've got my meat thermometer. I'm just gonna grab the thickest part of the chicken. This breast is a little thicker, and I'm gonna put that right in here, just like that. And you can actually see on the camera, 
there, we're looking for 165 internal temperature to know that our chicken is done. You can pretty much gather that it's done because it is all white, but we want to just double check that we are going up. So we've hit that 160 mark, and we are well on to 170. So our chicken is definitely done. So we've got that there, and our potatoes look fantastic. They've browned up a bit, our beans have cooked. I'm going to turn the oven off. We realized that with this particular oven, you press timer to set it on, put our time in, and then press timer again. Um, so in case you're all waiting to see how we um, figured that one out too, um, we, we, we did get going on that. So we're going to come on back over to the table here. And we've got one last finishing touch that we have not used at all yet, and that is our Parmesan cheese. Beans and Parmesan cheese go fantastic together, so we're going to give a little sprinkle there. You want to do this while it is still hot. Okay, we've got a couple of tablespoons that we're working with, and I like cheese on everything, so I'm going to add it to the potatoes as well. And it'll just finish off with a nice, nice little flavor. Parmesan cheese, um, it's got more of that bite to it, which will complement that honey really nicely. Um, because I left my tongs over, the, actually no, I'm going to go get my tongs. I'm so excited about my hat, I forgot my tongs. Um, so we're just going to kind of mix that up a little bit, just like that. Get the cheese coated all over, all over the beans, like that. Give those potatoes a bit of a stir, like that. We did notice that we may have cut our potatoes a tad too big um, because they also did take a little bit longer. So um, play around, learn what works best for you. Um, and that's it. So we can take this, divide it out, cool it and use it for lunches. Um, we've got our supper, it's all right here, ready to go. There's no other pans we have to clean up and that parchment paper will make it super easy to clean the pan underneath. Um, so I'm gonna grab a couple of potatoes here talk about our presentation skills. I'm going to grab a piece of chicken, put that on the plate. I mean, three potatoes isn't really enough potato, is it? There we go. Kind of stack them up a little bit, make them look fancy. And uh, for our green beans, uh, let's go right on to the top. I'll drop one there. Off to the side, just like that. A little bit there. And I'm actually going to grab a spoon. Grab a spoon here, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this glaze that's collected on this pan. And again, it was cooking with the chicken, so anything that would have been there, you know, and we're just gonna kinda drizzle it around a little bit. We can uh, drag the chicken and the potatoes through as we are eating. But, fancy looking for our main dish meal. Uh, so, there you go, uh, one complete sheet pan dinner ready to go. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna give the potatoes a little try. They smell so good. Oh, they're nice and nice and soft and tender inside. Right there. Oops, get a little bit of that dressing. I know this is gonna be hot. Mmm, oh my goodness. Jess, you're gonna love this. I'm so it's excited. It's so good. Um, the cheese, the seasonings, the honey. Oh, this is a good one. Uh, so thanks for joining us today. Next week we're doing something a little different. We are doing a palate cleanser and I'm going to let you know right now you will need a blender or food processor of some type in order to complete this recipe. We're going to be making a berry sorbet. Um, I know it's really cold out there and we might not want to be having something cold right now, uh, but it, we're going to talk a little bit about how it acts as a palate cleanser when we go on to our final dish, our dessert because um, we're eating a lot of you know garlic, things like that. We want to clean all of that up before we finish with our dessert. Um, so that's what next week will be. Thanks so much for joining us again. I'm going to dive in because it is definitely past lunch and I'm starving. And we'll see you next week. Bye.